Good morning, everyone, and welcome to another video. Today, I decided that I needed to use my Hakko soldering set. I purchased this a couple years ago with fully the intent of training myself to solder and desolder on the motherboards and video cards and whatnot, especially with some of the issues I've had with uh, batteries and capacitors. Never actually did get around with it, but I thought this morning I would dig it all up, lay it all out, go over everything, and um, do my very first soldering project, which would be taking this barrel battery off of my 486 386 motherboard. So this is a Hakko FX88D, the D meaning digital. This was one of the upgrades they did a couple years ago to their series of soldering sets. They used to be analog. They changed it over to digital, and I'm going to go ahead and turn it on, and we'll get it warmed up. The default setting on this without any presets, and it does hold four presets, is I believe 750 degrees Fahrenheit. It comes with the main heating unit. It comes with a pen with a fairly fine tip. It comes with a holding tray for the pen. It comes with a sponge, which I will wet and keep the pan clean. It comes with cleaning wire, which tucks right in here so we can abrade it a little bit and get some of the excess solder off. I also purchased separately an additional set of tips for the soldering iron. So we have a flat tip a smaller flat tip, the smallest flat tip, and two very fine points. And I'm going to actually switch out. So it does heat up to 750 very rapidly. And in order to change the temperature, press and hold enter, and then this can be changed. So what I'm going to do is set a preset of about 650 which is the right temperature for desoldering everything that I've seen shows that good desoldering occurs around 600 to 650 you know maybe I should go more in between I think I'll change that to 625 we'll go for sort of a middle ground those of you out there feel free to leave a comment let me know what I'm doing wrong at this point or what temperature you like to desolder at. On these older motherboards, especially something made in the early 90s, I'm suspecting that it, um, it is lead solder. I don't expect to see lead-free solder. So as part of that, well, let's go ahead and change this first. So we hit enter and then I'm going to knock this down to 625. And it's that easy. Very, uh, you know, once you get used to doing that, just easy breezy as far as I'm concerned. So I'm going to go ahead and shut this off for now. Let the pen cool down quick. I also wanted to show that I'm not a complete idiot. I am going to have a low velocity fan here while I'm doing my desoldering just to blow the vapors away. You know, this is a well-ventilated garage space that I'm using with the door open. But, you know, for the sake of being safe, uh, there's no point getting Dane Bramage from the lead vapors. Additionally, I picked up braid to wick up the solder. So I do have some braid. or soldering wick, as it's called. And we'll be using that. And that's about the right size for the solder joints and connections that I'll actually be taking apart today. And I do have a spool of lead-free rosin core soldering wire. And the important thing to remember 
when you're picking out soldering wire, as I've read on the interwebs, is, oh, and this is lead free, yeah, lead free, nice. Um, acid cores for plumbing, rosin cores for electronics. Don't mix the two up, and I'm never gonna try. And the rosin core is used in lieu of a separate flux component. So if you're using solid core wire, you have to apply flux for a clean solder joint. It helps prep the copper pads and you get a nice shiny conductive soldering environment when you use that. But the rosin core, it's sort of an all in one. This is a 0.065 thickness. I was gonna try and pick up some 0.035 later on uh, for some of the finer connections that I plan to solder down the road. But for now, I think this is a good start. So, as far as switching tips on this, and it is still pretty red hot, we'll let that cool down, we'll take a break, and then we'll switch the tip on that. What I'll do now is go ahead and change the tips. I'm going to switch from this fairly fine tip to a slightly finer tip. Just A, because I don't trust my work yet, and B, I think the, the finer tip looks more like something I would use. Just switching tips is fairly easy. Just unscrew the top. It lifts right out. And we can switch tips, put it right over the heating element. Easy peasy. And there we are. We'll set this bad boy aside. And there we have it, we have our fine tip soldering iron. I did wet the sponge, and we do have the cleaning wire in there. I don't think I need too much wire exposed yet. But I'll go ahead and give myself some breathing room here. Just a little more length would be nice. As far as the cleaning wick, I'll get that going. So we've got our wick, we've got our soldering iron, and we're going to try, after I reset the camera, my first desoldering. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the heating unit. Let it get up to 625 as we preset it. And once you do your first preset, it'll turn on to that temperature each time. There is a capability of putting in a password for the different presets also. I'm not getting into all that also today. Right here, and here, here and here, are the two joints we're going to desolder to get that battery free. And this is, as I said, Mr. Amateur Solderer Hour. This will be my very first attempt at anything like this. So we'll say a little prayer that everything turns out okay. If things get out of focus every now and then, I apologize. It is some fine tuning with the camera. It likes and dislikes it at the same time. So, I'm taking off my glasses because Uncle Mike is a little nearsighted. Turning on my fan. Getting everything ready. Got my sponge here. This motherboard isn't working currently anyways. The way this battery's set up. So getting this battery out of here 
is important. While there's less on there than there was a few seconds ago, getting the excess solder off my pen. We have one leg free. One leg free and fairly clean. Well, wasn't that an adventure? Time to get number two done. Right there. Get the tip clean. Snip a little bit off my wick. She's out, it feels fairly clean. It's a little residue, but I don't want to completely expose and destroy the copper pad. I believe it's what they would say, good enough. I'll shut down and let it cool off. I know you're supposed to retin the tip. I'm not 100% on retinning a tip what that exactly means. I don't know if that means I should apply a little solder to the tip of the pen, possibly. I'll figure that out as time goes on. But I dare say, there I have it, minus the battery. There and there. So, my Hakko soldering set, I have to say, um, at least I didn't burn myself. I didn't set anything on fire. I got this battery off this motherboard. I'll be doing a separate video on cleaning the traces and trying to see if I can fit an external battery on there since it does have the connections actually for an external battery. Happy Sunday morning to all my friends out there, and thanks for joining in.